Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Richard Clothier from Phoenix Datacom, and today with our colleagues from CypherCloud, we're going to talk about how we are seeing companies address data security and compliance challenges when migrating to the cloud, and how they are responding to the increased data security threat vector associated with this continued trend for home working. So a quick one through our, of our agenda today, we're going to cover the data protection and security compliance implications of two unescapable trends, cloud migration, and more recently, increased home working. We'll all cover CypherCloud's approach to dealing with these implications, and this will be illustrated with some customer case points and a very quick solution demo. And then we'll finish with a Q&A. But please do send me your questions via the private chat facility and I'll bring these out at the end. And please note, we will not record the Q&A session. So to begin with, who is CypherCloud? Well, CypherCloud is a leader in cloud security and visibility and enables companies to migrate to the cloud and realize all the benefits of digital transformation initiatives without affecting data protection, compliance, or indeed control. But why have we at Phoenix Datacom partnered with CypherCloud? and at a time where there are so many security vendors available in the market, as well as approaches to addressing cyber threats? Well, it boils down to two main reasons, really. So firstly, cloud migration trends, and more recently, increased home working, are not really things that are going to go away. So companies need long-term adaptable responses to these trends, so they themselves can continue to embrace them without impacting security posture. Also, a lot of what we see now is that many people are actually enjoying working from home. So if companies are more able to easily embrace this, happy staff is good for business. And secondly, we at Phoenix Datacom are all about clever approaches to problems, approaches that have a positive and meaningful impact for our customers. So without wishing to talk product, we are impressed with CypherCloud's method for addressing cloud security and data loss prevention in one platform. But I'm not going to steal anyone's thunder on that, as our CypherCloud colleagues will cover that during the session. And so without any further ado, I'll now hand over to our colleagues at CypherCloud. Thank you. Hey, Richard, thanks very much. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we know your time's valuable and uh, certainly uh, greatly appreciative of uh, getting a chance to talk a bit today about, you know, again, some of the pervasive issues. I'm sure if you're here, um, you know, we're very familiar with the current landscape. Uh, we're all living in it. So, um, you know, really touch upon what we're seeing uh, from practitioners, right, in terms of best practices around supporting um, increased app, uh, adoption of cloud applications, uh, certainly uh, remote workers and cloud collaboration, and how that folds into, you know, larger practices of data security um and uh, remote collaboration in particular right um i'm uh, matt hines i'm the vice president of marketing at cypher cloud as richard noted we are a uh, you know a technology provider uh, we, we have a, a pretty interesting i feel portfolio of capabilities that span a couple of key product categories we won't spend a lot of time talking about that up front i'm joined by mahesh rachakanda my colleague he's our vp of uh, product and solutions engineering a long time industry vet Mahesh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Matt. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, for introductions, I am a security practitioner. I have uh, spent uh, a great part of my career working with the customers and helping them really solve a security problem. I'm glad to be here. We have an exciting presentation today about cloud security and the demo as well. Looking forward to that. Thank you, Mahesh. And Mahesh is going to play slide jockey, so forgive me as I uh, ask him to uh, roll the slides forward. We want to move quickly in the time that we have. Um, just a quick look at what we'll talk about here today, right? Uh, let's let's set some context behind all of this. Um, again, we're all very familiar, but just some quick data points. And then really get into what I feel is the meat of the presentation here, right? Let's talk about some best practices around securing cloud data and supporting remote collaboration, right? I think this is really where the interesting part of the conversation lies today. Uh, beyond that, we will, of course, be happy to show you a little bit about us, right, our CyberCloud CASB Plus solution, uh, and some of the related capabilities uh, as it uh, uh, correlates with our conversation today, and then Mahesh will run through a demo. As Richard said, very interested in making this as uh, 
um, interactive a preposition a um, presentation as possible. If you have any questions, please shoot them over. We're happy to grab those and try to either answer them in real time or uh, follow up at the end of the show. Mahesh, if you want to jump into the uh, into what what's called the, uh, the 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 environment portion of the uh, of the conversation today, so some quick stats. Right, uh, the first stat here really calling out the fact that while you know the, the global pandemic has driven uh, really uh, greatly accelerated adoption of the remote workforce, expansion of the remote workforce. As we all know, this is ongoing for many years. I myself have been remote for a number of years. I'm sure there are others on the phone who have uh, enjoyed this uh, adaptive uh, environment, right, from the standpoint of, um, you know, we don't need to be inside the corporate walls anymore. You know, uh, it, uh, depending upon your job, increasingly, you can be anywhere in the world. And in particular, this was intensified, of course, by COVID, right? And, you know, these numbers from Gallup. Gallup is you know, here in the States, Gallup is a, a pollster who's more um, familiar uh, within the context of politics, right? It's interesting to see that, you know, this, is, uh, you know, this isn't just a technology story, right? This is a broader um, social story as, um, as, you know, we've seen the realities take hold. And um, it's an opportunity, right? There's both risk and opportunity. Uh, it, another interesting point, of course, from Chubb here, uh, who also does some pretty interesting research. Again, these not all kind of uh, industry sources. I like that. These are um, some fairly generic um, outside of the tech world sources, right? 70%, 74% or more of folks hoping to stay remote in some regard after this has passed. And certainly organizations are seeing operational efficiencies, reduced uh, costs related to, you know, things like rent and operate, other operational expenses. Uh, such that, you know, uh, I think the, the end game that's part of the silver lining here um, will be, you know, in a hopefully soon to be a less COVID or post COVID world, remote workforce is going to um, sustain on a broader level. Mahesh, if you want to move to the next slide. I'm going to move quickly here because, again, I assume that everybody on here is, is pretty familiar, right? I don't think, I don't think we, uh, any of us needs an introduction to the fact that, um, you know, COVID happened quickly. Right, it, it drove immediate overnight change and growth in the remote workforce, uh, and and there are challenges. Right, uh, supporting, you know, uh, workers who would have been, you know, on a corporate device inside the corporate network, um, within the context of accessing, sharing, collaborating around sensitive data. If you're a financial services company, if you are a healthcare company, if you're, you know, you're talking about a call center. Um, or any kind of workflow, you know, where sensitive information was being uh, utilized. You know, traditionally, these have not been people sitting at home on their home network with their uh, tablet that, you know, someone else in their family uses to browse the web. But that's where we've ended up. So clearly, you know, both business and certainly technology and security leaders had to adapt quickly, right? And, you know, as Gartner, who we use a lot for outside validation points out here, right, this is going to be a moving target for some time. Um, and there's a lot of need for uh, recalibration of strategy. Um, and supporting tooling, of course, as well. Mahesh, uh, this is where I'll uh, I'll call it your uh, sage wisdom here. Is you're on the field, you're out there every day speaking with practitioners and customers. Uh, you know, it, we're we're nine months into this, more or less nine, ten months into this this sea change. What are you hearing? What's kind of the latest state of uh, of conversation around um, you know uh, practitioners, customers, people in the in the field as related to these um, evolving challenges? Certainly, uh, the audience is familiar with uh, the remote work situation, right? Um, what's also very important is that the organizations had to uh, uh, rethink the way the enterprise applications are made available, right? The way the business is actually run. Um, if there was a, an on-premise, let's say Office 365, uh, that uh, had to be changed to, um, uh, you know, to the uh, cloud version because of the broad network access and the facilities it brings in to support the um, uh, you know remote workforce. Similarly, um, when people are working from home, uh, the collaboration aspect becomes significantly important, right? Uh, how do you replace um, the, the collaboration that you have had uh, in an office? So um, employees are increasingly tools like Teams, Slack, right, to quickly get the answers that they need from the uh, colleagues. And the challenge is um, uh, VPNs haven't scaled, right, uh, to meet the uh, security needs uh, to keep uh, the, the access and data locked down. So most of the employees are actually using uh, the home networks, right, um, which are unmanaged. 
and often the uh, unmanaged devices as well, right? Their own laptops and uh, mobile devices. So um, this opens up a world of uh, challenges for the information security teams to be able to um, enforce the security control framework, right, to the new remote work situations. It's a completely different landscape now. Right. Right, and you know, in this next slide is it's, it's an architecture slide, right? This is how we see, you know, clearly we're all familiar with the risks, right? Whether that's classified data, right? The whole nature of uh, collaboration internally, externally, um, you know, access, um, you know, uh, unseen data exposures, uh, certainly compromise uh, being, um, you know, some of the again challenges around uh, preventing risk, right, and covering off against threats. You know, and compliance remaining a huge driver. I know we're, you know, uh, speaking in the world of, uh, of uh, you know, the MEA context today in the UK, right? Certainly GDPR has been a huge driver across IT security for years, right? So, but, but again, to answer these questions on the right side of the screen, in particular as it relates to continued adoption of cloud applications and collaboration match, right? It's, uh, this is no simple prospect, right? Um, there's a lot of, uh, of key um, requirements and challenges that need to be addressed um, Currently, to try to again wrap your arms around this growing use case. Absolutely, yeah. Um, we have a lot of the sensitive data, uh, the growing users of uh, an organization has already moved to the cloud. We know that, and every organization is using upwards of 15 and uh, even 20 clouds, right? Um, but the requirements from the compliance standpoint, uh, if the organization falls under GDPR, or PCI, or HIPAA, right, a type of uh, compliance needs or data residency for that matter, um, the, those haven't changed. And then the applications and data is uh, much more widely accessible, right, due to the broad uh, um, accessibility of the cloud. And then all these uh, personal devices sold in. So um, how does the um, CISO really make sure that the security control framework and the compliance needs are met uh, with this increased footprint of the cloud usage, right? So that's uh, that's what information security personnel are, are really challenged with. And then the resources haven't gone up a whole lot either, right? They are still working with one or two people uh, to deal with uh, these 20 plus applications which are vast. Uh, the configurations, the security elements of each of these cloud applications is significant, so that, that's that's where uh, they are really struggling to to ensure that there is uh, that uh, uh, unified policy control right across the clouds. Right, so uh, so here we are, right? <laughs> to uh, to add a high degree of, of nuance and perspective, here we are. Now again, we've uh, this is uh, we've been talking about this at length uh, for the better part of a year. Right, and I think this is the this is the, the interesting part of the conversation. It's like, what are we actually doing, right? What are the best practices and technical capabilities that are emerging as the um, most uh, adaptive and appropriate solution to help address these problems, right? These challenges. Uh, and so, in these following slides, we'll work through that quickly. This next slide is a really simple, over simple marketing level representation, right? Of 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 how you know. What is what is the you know what does the threat look like right what does the risk look like you know your our, our customers tend to use um, numerous cloud applications they're using Office 365 you know for productivity and communication uh, you know for data retention data residency uh, you know SAP Success Factors is obviously is a hugely popular platform from the standpoint of human resources ServiceNow for ITSM listen we all know Slack right G Suite a lot of this increasing number of organizations moving to G Suite based uh, collaboration and communication tooling. So we have all these clouds uh, across our environment and then, you know, then we have the data, right? We've got the, we've got sensitive customer data. We've got, you know, and, and the action might be, you know, I'm a worker, I'm downloading that data, you know, in, in the form of a document um, uh, from a, uh, a cloud application to my device, right? And then I'm gonna take that information and share it out in another cloud application. Right. Is that appropriate? Is that is that covered off by a policy correctly? Are all the compliance considerations being met? Right. Are you know, is tooling like data loss prevention aligned specifically uh, to either allow or prevent, you know, uh, particular, um, you know, iterations thereof. So this is a very simple, this is a simple, uh, you know, uh, visualization of this. But even you start to do the math, right, you add up all the various 
um, you know, factors here, right? All the particular um, combinations of activities and uh, exposures, and, and this is just a, a small subset, right? As you extrapolate this across an enterprise, it's, you know, the, the numbers, you're real when you start to think about the sheer complexity of it all, and certainly it's just translating some of the traditional data security best practices that we've been evolving for years into the world of the cloud. Um, Mahesh, if you want to move forward, I think let's jump into the, uh, let's jump into these best practices, right? In terms of, so integrated cloud data protection, right? How do you centralize uh, your, your protection across multiple clouds, right? You know, we're not here to uh, take away from any of the native security controls. A lot of these uh, cloud platforms, uh, Office 365 in particular, they've gone a long way to implement um, uh, very, very uh, useful tooling, right? To, from the standpoint of trying to uh, give you a start. But when you bring that into the context of multiple clouds and you know some of the collaborative workflows ongoing across an organization, again, there's there's a need for a broader strategy here in terms of you know what data is out there. Uh, again, uh, you know, are you correctly allowing your DLP to enforce controls against that? Email is a huge, uh, huge, huge consideration and and, and behavior, right? Being able to understand and identify, you know, inappropriate use or something that might be, uh, you know, evidence of a compromised account as quickly as possible. Um, Mahesh, I know that, you know, within our large customers, certainly, you know, the multi-cloud environment, wrapping your arms around data protection for these, you know, broad-based collaborative workflows is really, it's no simple task. It is not, and uh, as you were mentioning, Matt, uh, the, the disparity in clouds, right? Uh, each of the clouds uh, and applications is geared for a purpose. Um, it may be a structured cloud like Salesforce or ServiceNow where there is specific field level information. Um, and there, there are unstructured clouds like Box, OneDrive, SharePoint, where information can flow in the form of you know, a variety of document formats, uh, uh, even images, right? Um, and then there is email, um, which is an essential service for every organization, right? How often have you seen the email coming to you and then the sender uh, wants to recall it, right? Uh, oops, I should not have sent that out, right? Um, so please delete. So, uh, and then uh, step up and go to the collaboration aspects, right? Teams or Slack, uh, we have uh, uh, potentially hundreds of people and groups on a particular channel. Now a sensitive uh, you know, content is posted to the channel. Uh, who amongst all those users, internal and external, um, are actually authorized to see that information? So, uh, you know, when you actually look at the different use cases, we are not even talking about the sync applications, right, that are pulling data, the connected applications to uh, the clouds, right, the integrations, because, you know, no cloud is in silos. So all of this complex cloud uh, setup um, makes it extremely difficult for the data production to be enforced. So uh, one, um, big stick policy doesn't work anymore, right? Uh, previously, we used to have the enterprise firewall, allow and deny. We used to be very simple, but that does not work anymore. Business wants to be able to use the cloud in a meaningful way. They're subscribing to service now for the rich IT service management capabilities. They're subscribing to teams for the ability to uh, instantaneously uh, talk to another authorized user. Now, you can't take any of these things away, but still the policy and data protection principles have to be enforced. So, uh, you know, security principles don't change, uh, right? They're still the same. They need to uh, classify the information as your high, medium, low, or how, whatever fits your organization. And then based on the data classification, make sure that uh, it is uh, seen and used on a, a need to know basis. Um, authenticate and authorize people, maintain proper audit, right? And then uh, understand the issues, monitor the behavior, and then uh, ensure that the end-to-end -end flow, right, of uh, information usage is adhering to the good compliance principles. So uh, this well-rounded data uh, protection across um, multiple uh, use cases, um, well, whether it's a CRM use case or ID service management or collaboration or you know whatever that is, 
uh, that is essential. Yeah, and very often, uh, the, you know, the conversation starts with, you know, we've uh, we greatly increased our use of Office 365, or you know, we're employing a, a greater number of services across SAP. Success factor service now. How do we, you know, begin, begin to enforce, um, you know, more precise controls across all of that, and then it goes out from there across other clouds and applications. Um, but it's, you know, certainly this is where the conversation uh, tends to begin in terms of trying to get the right level of uh, visibility and control over the data. Ash, if you want to move to the next slide, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, all of this goes back to policy, right? As Nash just noted, one big stick policy, um, you know, is not going to cut it. And, you know, as business process evolves, right, you know, we talk a lot to customers many times. It's not, it's, it's, it's really not about, um, you know, impropriety or, uh, you know, any sort of malicious intent. Uh, many times it's about uh, business process might change. Right, uh, workers in one particular of your business might have, um, you know, their roles might have evolved such that they now have new requirements for sensitive data, and you know, policies need to change to support that. And you know, the hand, one hand does not always know what the other is doing. So, um, you know, a big play with this is also efficiency. Uh, but you know, getting the right policies in place is obviously, you know, and refining policies to support all of this within the context of remote collaboration in the cloud is is a huge challenge, right? And we spend a lot of time uh, talking to people about it, you know, how to go about, uh, again, doing this in the most efficient manner to optimize policies um, and to do so in an efficient way such that, you know, your line of business uh, workers aren't um, spending their time, you know, trying to figure out who needs access to what, right? So that security can do its job efficiently. Um, and, and again, having that uh, integrated approach from the standpoint uh, of you know everything from uh, data classification and labeling through to enforcement and and again compliance being a huge driver of this GDPR. I know GDPR has been even within the context of remote collaboration has been uh, you know one of the big conversations that we've been having to hash. Correct? Yeah, yeah. GDPR, data resiliency, um, uh, especially in the remote work situation and access from unmanaged devices. These are all hot topics and. To your point, uh, Matt, uh, having a fine-grained policy engine, right, uh, which is capable of understanding all the uh, important attributes. The attribute may be um, the you know user ID, or user group, or the location where the user is coming from, the type of uh, you know device it's managed or unmanaged, is it in a good state, right, and then where is the user uh, going in terms of uh, the the application, the area within the application, is it a secure folder, right? Is it a public folder? And what is the content the user is dealing with, right? Is it uh, sensitive data that has PII, right? Uh, falling into the GDPR uh, regulatory, uh, you know, requirement. Um, are, um, you know, are there any existing classifications already done on the document? Do they need to be reclassified? So there are, a ton of uh, uh, in attributes, and then based on the user activity, is it uh, is the user sending this information to the cloud, or uh, you know downloading or exfiltrating information uh, from the application? Um, so there are, there is a lot to be considered, uh, and then a range of actions can be applied as well, right? So really, when you look at the policy. Um, it has to account for all these different elements and then give the flexibility to uh, the administrator uh, to, to pick and choose what they want to be enforcing. This really the fine grained policy control uh, is what makes uh, the business um, uh, adapt to security, right? The business secu ready security is essential. Uh, without which um, you know, security controls can impact uh, uh, the, the um, business usage. Um, and then the last point I would make here is that having the capability to apply a single policy to many clouds, right? Many applications is, is also uh, very helpful because the security admin cannot keep on coming up with new policies for each of the cloud applications and then uh, try to maintain, right? Uh, that, that, that doesn't work. So one policy, there is a GDPR policy, uh, be able to apply that to the 20, 30 uh, cloud applications you're um, subscribing to, and even the enterprise apps for that matter, we're gonna talk about that too. 
uh, but have that uh, single policy applicable to uh, you know all the applications is, is that's what helps the business today. And I know we're moving quickly as we roll to the next slide. Uh, that last point there on enforcement, right? Uh, it's a big piece of the puzzle, right? And if you think about you know the example that I, I offered up front of you know people working from their home networks on a unmanaged device, right? Um, they're interacting with sensitive data, compliance sensitive data. Uh, on a, you know, it, within their home environment, right? How do you ensure that um, you're able to maintain appropriate data security controls, right? Uh, everything from, uh, again, initial access, certainly through to things like encryption, right? And that's that's an area that we, you know, CyberCloud's got a long history, you might guess from our name, in uh, cloud encryption. And, and we see that among our customers as a, I was having a conversation with an industry analyst about this yesterday as an emerging use case, right? I mean, obviously there's always been a requirement uh, to enforce appropriate encryption, uh, but certainly within the context of managed and unmanaged devices, uh, being able to wipe data after sessions, uh, ensuring, you know, uh, your user, you're, you're, again, you're downloading uh, sensitive data from one particular, uh, you know, whether it's some element of Office 365 to another or, you know, from, uh, you know, uh, application to application, being able to maintain the appropriate controls across that a uh, huge, huge uh, requirement and, and, and absolutely something that we're hearing more about all the time, Ash. I know that, you know, again, you've uh, you've been around this world of encryption for a long time yourself. Yeah, uh, data protection is, is uh, really the last line, right, of defense. Um, uh, typically, in a uh, good uh, security control framework, you would layer the policies, right, build that defense in depth. And uh, uh, don't don't depend on any one control. Don't depend on the user ID. You don't depend on uh, the access controls. Uh, ultimately, if uh, an incident were to occur, uh, you know, data protection encryption ensures that the information is is secure. Um, and uh, it is so if you actually keep the keys away right from the encrypted data. Again, this is a good old principle. Nothing new. Uh, doing that in an effective way. Uh, you know, in the cloud environment and the uh, distributed environment where the data is actually syncing to the endpoints and other clouds, uh, that's where the trick is. Um, and also, uh, you know, if you have, let's say, one a cloud instance, right, um, which is in use by multiple business units across the world, um, it gets even trickier, right, to make sure that uh, the compliance needs are met um, when the data is actually residing in, in one region. So um, this comprehensive uh, data security model, right, um, uh, is uh, what the security teams need today, and that's what makes an organization compliant as well. Again, I know we're moving quickly here. We just want to get through all the uh, the concepts here and leave a little bit of time for the for the demo. But I will um, encourage uh, you know anybody who's here, please do send in your questions. We're happy to try to tackle those as we move along. So configuration. Right. The reality is, if you look at the headlines, right, the solar winds, we've done a lot of work around the solar winds uh, breach, right? And, you know, the whole notion of connecting cloud applications there and trust relationships, I think it really does closely relate to a lot of the topics that we've been touching on already, right? Uh, but a, a vast majority of the data breach incidents uh, related to the cloud these days revolve around configuration, right? Uh, developers are spinning up instances. Um, there's a lack of visibility uh, in a lot of cases. Uh, so data ends up out there accessible uh, to the world uh, when researchers, um, you know, go looking for it, right? So configuration and, and doing it from an integrated standpoint, uh, you know, folks like Gartner, again, they're looking at management and configuration as a core kind of integrated requirement around cloud and data security, um, you know, certainly from a, a process, if not from a tooling standpoint, um, on a growing basis, right? The notion of, you know, you need to maintain visibility into your configurations using automation, to understand where exposures arise, you know, certainly configurations change, um, and to ensure again that all the underlying assets are protected. But, you know, uh, Gartner in their, you know, if you however much uh, faith you put in the Gartners of this world in their magic quadrant for CASB, uh, one of the product areas that we compete in, um, they said this year basically they came out and said that you know uh, what we call cloud security uh, posture management, the configuration piece of this is a is a requirement, right? Is a growing requirement as opposed to uh, an, a unique discipline from the standpoint of addressing cloud security and data security in general. Mahesh, I know, obviously, you know, this has been a big focus for us. Um, 
you know, in security and in, in cloud security posture management, SaaS security posture management are uh, are a, a big uh, big point of uh, discussion and exposure for our clients. It is, and in fact, I you know when I look back into the recent events, right, uh, most of them have to do with the misconfigurations of the cloud and. The, the audience can quickly connect to uh, the leaky uh, buckets, like S3 buckets. You hear so much about the open S3 buckets and uh, the data leaking. It's not that uh, in Amazon Web Services is inherently insecure, right? It's very secure. But the way you configure uh, the buckets can lead to data exposure. So what if you had a, a tool uh, that actually applies the uh, best practices, right? The benchmarks, the CA and benchmarks to um, the multiple cloud instances, checks on the configuration, makes make sure that uh, the, the configurations are correct, right? And the cloud instances are well sealed up, right? Uh, one threads. So that's where the configuration assessments come into play. Uh, they can not only uh, show you uh, the misconfigurations, um, uh, but they can also remediate, auto remediate uh, the issues uh, in the cloud. And it's uh, you know certainly again uh, bring this together in an integrated fashion is uh, is a big part of our uh, of our cipher cloud go to market these days. Again, not to hawk the product too aggressively here. Uh, we're getting to the end of the best practices and these days. It's it, to have one of these conversations and not have the word zero trust enter. Uh, you know, the nomenclature is difficult. Certainly, you know, I think it really applies here. You know, zero trust network access. Certainly, you know, the beautiful thing about cloud applications is there has been so much increased focus on addressing, um, you know, uh, access and security uh, for those tools, right? It's, it's for those capabilities, uh, for those data sets, right? The, you know, there's been so much emphasis put on uh, adoption and then, you know, the follow on or an integrated piece securing, um, you know, adoption that, you know, it's it's actually made it, you know, it's it's begun to throw a light on the fact that for traditional, you know, for legacy applications not resident in the cloud, uh, we need a similar set of, of capabilities, right? You need to be able to offer a uniform experience to your, you know, your remote worker. Um, they're using, they might be using obviously multiple applications as they do their job every day, even within the context of, uh, you know, particular workflows, unique workflows. So you have to be able to offer um, a similar, you know, level of, of network or rather access control uh, across uh, legacy applications, not resident in the cloud, resident in the data center and across, you know, the hybrid environment. So, you know, there's been a lot written and said about zero trust network access, zero trust in general is a huge trend. There's this, there's this whole notion of this thing called SASE, Secure Access Service Edge, which is a big uh, methodological movement among uh, best practices folks, analysts, thought leaders. We just launched a zero trust network access product ourselves uh, last week, and uh, it's really you know it's been there's been a lot of interest right because organizations certainly those who have already begun to wrap their arms around um, you know the you know uh, securing their Office 365 environments or securing their SAP uh, or ServiceNow environment they're they're looking at their other traditional apps uh, their hybrid IT apps and saying you know we really do need to account for all of this in particular driven by remote workforce. Um, Hash, I know that you've uh, obviously we've had a lot of activity around zero trust network access these days. Uh, yeah, uh, again, going back to uh, the issues that we have seen recently, right? The lateral movement uh, within the corporate networks has led to many, many issues, right? Uh, call it the solar winds or uh, capital ones or whatnot. Um, and fundamental issue is to uh, gain access to the network, right, via VPN or whatnot, and then be able to, you know, move around, right? Um, so zero trust network access gives that um, point security, um, application specific security. And the beauty is that when you enable uh, VPNA to an application, let's say you have a, uh, you know, order management system, right, running within the uh, either the enterprise data center or uh, the uh, you know VPC that you're subscribing to uh, within Amazon. Um, what you can do is when you enable VTMA, only the authorized user actually sees the application. So uh, for the rest, it is cloaked. You don't even see the port, right, where the application is running. So it's it's uh, built in a, a you know highly secure manner um, for um, modern access 
uh, whereby each of the applications can be um, enabled for uh, not just access control, right? Uh, allow or deny, but you know, make the access based on content awareness, right? Um, so all the principles that we just talked about uh, for SaaS applications, such as you know, being able to apply DLP, having deep visibility into user activity, right, and uh, protecting uh, the downloads that might be coming out of uh, the um, uh, applications uh, holding on to the sensitive data. All of those are applicable, right, even to the enterprise apps uh, running anywhere, in your data center or even VPC. So that cloaking of applications and enabling a very specific and granular security to each of the applications is, is at the heart of VTNA. Ash is just greatly relieved that I did not sneak my VP end of an era joke onto this slide. Um, nobody thinks that's funny, I don't think. Um, definitely not my kids. Anyhow, uh, so so again, I know we moved quickly through this section. and. Um, you know, we're not here to talk, you know, we, we, you know, the emphasis is on having the conversation, right? Uh, talking about this at a high level, you know, we are, CypherCloud uh, is a cloud and data security provider. You know, the solution that's most relevant, certainly as I know that we do have our CPNA solution to your trust remote access, which I uh, launched last week. But, you know, we have uh, what we feel is the most data centric CASB on the market today, right? And that spans everything from, you know, uh, cloud discovery and data discovery uh, through the access piece, uh, we spend a lot of time talking about data protection, as I noted, as it was reflected in this uh, 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 presentation today, right? Uh, having the, the notion of integrated DLP, um, you know, both uh, within the platform and integrating with existing DLP infrastructure and policy, that's a, you know, a huge area of emphasis. We are a company that has, you know, our product has a, has a significant um, leadership role in terms of uh, rights management and encryption from a CASB perspective, you know, and, and, and the, you know, obviously a huge part of it relates back, you know, uh, across the whole notion of um, policy enforcement, and governance, and compliance. Uh, threat prevention is another key area, right? We have this, uh, you know, our platform has integrated antivirus and any malware. We partner with organizations. It's important to partner. I point out that you know, integration with uh, everything from SIMS to SOAR. Uh, MDM, IAM, SSO, all of that, that uh, out of the box capability to integrate with industry leading platforms, uh, a huge piece of this as well, right? Through the threat prevention where we've partnered with folks like FireEye uh, to offer advanced uh, threat prevention within the platform as well. Ash, I know you're ready. You're gonna um, take folks through uh, a quick demo here. Again, if you have any particular questions as we move through this, please just uh, drop them in the chat and we'll be happy to follow up after the demo. Okay, all right, let's uh, roll right into the demo. And um, I'll start with uh, you know, the, the uh, entry point right to uh, the world of CASB. Um, it's very easy to actually point CASB at the existing usage of uh, the uh, cloud, right? And um, we can actually you know be able to draw the intelligence on the cloud usage in terms of activity right and the risk posture as well um, the, the CASB solution breaks the cloud usage down in many um, uh, angles uh, by the risk there's a rich knowledge base under the hoods of the product with which you can actually show the users are actually going to high risk storage clouds right uh, um, you know, the uh, usage has been, according to the policy, sanctioned, right? So uh, it's all drill down type of reporting. And uh, what you can actually generate out of this one is a beautiful report. Um, so uh, a report, uh, that report contains the written summary of, uh, you know, what the usage is. For example, here, you know, 329 applications are in use, cloud applications in 40 categories, right? And risk is with 42 of them. Um, and then it goes into a lot of details of um, how much data has gone into each of the clouds, right? And then gives you the capability to um, block access to, um, you know, high risk um, applications, right? So it's a, a great tool. Uh, the shadow IT enforcement is a great tool for you to understand what the current uh, cloud usage is. 
and then be able to draw that uh, high level of governance right around uh, where the user goes and uh, what the user does um, with the cloud and then uh, i get this question very often right look i have uh, tried to enable security on an, an application earlier and it's a uh, you know it's a uh, takes a very long time right fall order um in fact it, you know with the new tool set with casb it's pretty easy right uh, you can actually onboard a new application cloud application for example you want to bring a service now or box or office 365 it literally takes few minutes for you to really onboard a cloud application right so here i am uh, onboarding a uh, an office 365 right so i can basically pick the components email right sharepoint one drive teams right i can pick the components that i want to enable security for and then uh, there is a range of security controls including real time access controls right uh, collaboration controls um, the configuration checks then email security right going back in time and scanning the existing data for uh, compliance right historical data for compliance uh, and then with a uh, few more clicks, you know, I can basically authorize um, the, the cloud here and then onboard, right? Um, like the way you're seeing, um, you can bring in your 50, 100 clouds, right? To CASB under that uh, uh, governance. And then right out of the bat, you get um, the um, activities, right? Um, for all the clouds, they start going in. And you can actually see what the users have done uh, in terms of uh, activities, right? Who the top hitters are. And then all of these are drill down reports. You can actually start with these pretty pictures and then go uh, to the detail of user Joe uploading uh, credit card information to um, Office 365 OneDrive on January you know, 7th of 2019, right? So you can go down to that level. And then, uh, you know, there are lots of policies that are available out of the box. We provide uh, more than a thousand uh, templates to meet the uh, needs of uh, uh, several compliance and security requirements. So um, when you have actually authored policies to um, enforce right um, actions, uh, you can actually see the policy enforcement very clearly here. Right, uh, there is a range of uh, uh, you know methods that we use to keep the users and security administration abreast of uh, the policy enforcement by means of notifications, by means of uh, using marker files, right, alerts, etc. And then uh, when you actually author a policy, right, uh, for example, if you want to, um, you know, build a policy that would actually, um, let's say, uh, would scan for credit card information as it's going to the cloud, right, and it tells the user that, look, you are trying to upload sensitive data to the cloud, which is not compliant with the policy. If you must do so, give a justification, right? So you can author policies like that in this fine grain policy engine. And then let me show you how the policies work, right? I'll, uh, you know, start with perhaps, uh, you know, Office 365, right? So I'm logged into uh, OneDrive here, right? which is a very popular file um, sync and share application. And what I want to do is to upload a file, right, from my file system. So I have picked basically a customer uh, credit card number, and I believe that this is something I need to do my work, right? So when I actually try to upload, I see a, a coaching message, right? Uh, you know, all of this can be customized, right? Uh, you can put your company logo here. Uh, you can put a uh, nice looking HTML uh, text uh, that, that meets the needs of your organization. And here, uh, you know, I'm working on right, PCI audit. Um, must, uh, right, upload, uh, right, uh, and share this file with manager. Um, you know, for the, so for Q3 audit, right? Q2 audit. So I gave my justification, and um, then now I'm allowed to actually upload uh, the information to the cloud, right? So it's a very simple example. Uh, I'm able to do my job, right? My job is to be able to share this information with my boss, and I have been able to do it. 
but uh, along the way, the policy uh, kicked in, and I did what I was required to do by policy to provide the justification, right? And then, uh, obviously, the prompt uh, or the coaching came about because uh, the file has actually sensitive data, right? It has got a credit card information with them. That's why. Now, uh, let me jump to a structured cloud, right? Um, this is, uh, you know, service now. And uh, I can perhaps, you know, uh, open uh, an incident and, uh, you know, add some additional, you know, text here, right? So uh, it's a national identifier, um, social security number that I am putting in, right? So I'm saying fix the duplicate account, please use this national identifier as the key. And then we have offered a policy to say that the national identifiers cannot leak right to the uh, public cloud so if i go ahead and uh, you know save this information right um so the by policy what the policy is supposed to do is to mask right the information so um, there is a dlp content inspection scan that that occurred right within the casb product and then the social security number got uh, masked if you actually look further right there is another incident here that has uh, you know a credit card number right so we have another policy that basically says that um, if uh, financial information is coming down to unmanaged devices right let's say that i'm a worker in the remote work situation and i'm trying to exfiltrate information or dump out the information onto my personal laptop and then the security posture of my laptop is relatively you know, unknown so what I'm trying to do here is to export, right, uh, the, the information. So this can be, uh, you know, service now list of, uh, you know, servers, or it can be Salesforce uh, accounts, your customer information, right, or even the m and documents that you might be storing in a data room, right. So when I try to export this information, you know, certainly service now is saying, okay, it's ready, download, right. So when I hit the download, the CASB product, right, intercepted because it has got sensitive content, right? I'm required to prove my identity, right? Um, past uh, what is, uh, um, you know, normal here. So this is basically stepping up and then it's asking me for my two-factor authentication. So I have enabled the security question for the demo, but it can be any second factor authentication that you have in place, right, within the organization. So once I have verified, right, uh, that information, now you can see the information came down, but it actually has the extension of that CC secure, right? If you're looking to the far right, uh, left here. Uh, this is actually the encrypted content. It's encrypted by the DRM technology that uh, we provide, works with any data format and any cloud, right? It's consistent. And then you have the capability to actually grant access to individual users or organizations and then be able to even revoke, right, after the fact. So beautiful tool uh, to help you keep the data protected everywhere. So, uh, you know, you got sort of a couple of examples on how you can um, scan the content, right, detect the action, understand the device posture, unmanaged device, and then be able to control the user activity, whether the user is uploading content to the cloud or downloading. Now, we haven't even gone to the collaboration aspects, right? Uh, removing the external collaborators and controlling recipients in email, encrypting uh, sensitive uh, file attachments in email, right? The list goes on and on. So the product actually provides you with all these capabilities to enforce fine-grained uh, actions, right? So I just want to show one more thing, right, um, uh, before uh, we, you know, roll. So uh, all of this information is available to you, right, uh, in a very uh, comprehensive manner, right? Um, for example, if I want to see that, well, in the last month, right, uh, what has the user, right, uh, done, right, if I'm investigating a particular user, now I can see that the user has actually worked from 36 devices. He has been in 14 locations. He worked with 19 applications, right? What are those, right? I can see. 
and what content the user has worked with and then uh, what has the user collaborated right uh, who all did he work with right so you can see uh, all the breakdown and then i can even stick a content a file name here right and i can see where all the file moved right i can see if the file uh, existed only in box or did it move to office 365 did it fall into the wrong hands was it downloaded by unmanaged devices you can see all the details from one place so we not only collect the information curate it and uh, normalize it but we actually make it very useful uh, to to our customers so uh, there is a lot of uh, the product uh, configuration checks right uh, data protection and a whole bunch of things and we'll be happy to arrange for uh, any detailed demos uh, please let us know thanks very much mahesh and obviously just a snapshot here um, of you know sort of the platform and some of the capabilities happy to drill down on any of this uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't offer at least one customer example um, if you want to roll the slides forward there mahesh um, in this particular example it was a customer a healthcare provider uh, here in, in north america who had to uh, massively expand their remote workforce overnight they had been supporting office 365 and other applications for a subset of users uh, but then given the pandemic had to address uh, overnight a uh, huge expansion of their remote workforce and uh, folks who were dealing with sensitive healthcare data. I, I know the, the the big story here, Ash, was how quickly this all uh, occurred and, and that we were able to, you know, help them through use of the product um, transition um, in a pretty agile fashion. What were some of the, I, I know you're all really close to this particular um, uh, deployment. What are some of the other key points that you would point out here? Um, first of all, it had to be done very quickly. Um, this particular customer uh, had to enable the remote workforce, uh, Office 365 to 40,000 plus employees in a short order. So, um, it, you know, there were, it was a complex deployment uh, with an enterprise DLP, right? Uh, with, uh, you know, content coming from 40,000 uh, users. Um, uh, using enterprise DLP, complex identity management systems, right, within the enterprise. All of that was a big challenge, but, uh, you know, we are glad we were able to do our part to contribute to the, the response, right, to COVID-19 and enable this particular customer in just uh, two weeks, right? A um, couple of uh, important uh, benefits to the customer are, number one, um, keep the information secure uh, on unmanaged devices. Right, using the data protection, using the encryption, EDRM technology that CypherCloud provides, and then uh, that actually helps them meet uh, the regulatory requirements, right, with respect to EPHI, um, uh, healthcare information handling. And then uh, the collaboration aspects um, from any device, from anywhere, right, based on the content and context is another big thing, right, for this customer. So a very successful deployment, uh, and we are glad to have this happy customer. Appreciate you moving through all of this so quickly. I know it's been a rapid fire session. Uh, Richard, uh, I'm not sure if you got any questions. I'll hand off back to you here to help uh, close us out. Really, again, can't thank everybody enough for their time today.